Hey everyone, so we're starting our photosynthesis uh, unit and uh, I wanted to put these screencasts out there so you have something to refer to. It looked like it was pretty successful uh, for the chapter test on cells, so I wanted to continue doing this for photosynthesis. Uh, photosynthesis is actually a, a pretty pretty challenging topic, right? So you may need to come back to these screencasts or to the book a couple of times if you're not getting it, okay? So make sure you take advantage of the of the resources you have available to you. For screencasts, if you're taking notes off the screencast, make sure that you um, pause it if you, if you need to stop and actually jot something down. Um, it'll just start right back up wherever you left off, so it shouldn't be too a good deal. Okay, so for photosynthesis, uh, photosynthetic organisms uh, use the energy and light to make food, right? So we talked about in class how, um, for the most part, plants um, are immobile and are not able to go out and get their own food, right? So with the exception of some carnivorous plants, they're rooted to the ground and uh, they need to make their own food to survive. So this, this process of photosynthesis is taking uh, the light energy from the sun and converting it into a food source that the, the plants can use to uh, basically build up macromolecules and to uh, use as energy. If you're following the path of light uh, in a plant, right? Uh, all plants are going to get their initial energy from the sun. Uh, the, the photosynthetic part of a plant, well the most photosynthetic part, anything that's green is photosynthetic technically, but the leaves uh, are the most photosynthetic. So I want to focus on the leaves uh, in this screencast. If you, if you were to take a leaf and kind of cut it in half like this, make a cross section, uh, this is what you would see. Okay, there are, uh, There's a layer right here and this layer is called the mesophyll layer. This mesophyll layer is loaded with mesophyll cells. Okay, these mesophyll cells have uh, lots of chloroplasts. So they have high numbers of chloroplasts. And we learned in the last unit that the chloroplast is the photosynthetic organelle for, for plants. So they have lots of chloroplasts in there. That's why it's the most photosynthetic um, portion of the, of the uh, leaf. Now, if we were to zoom in on the chloroplast, you can make uh, some distinctions between different parts of the inside of this organelle, right? So remember, this is an organelle. And now we're going to look inside the organelle. These little green flattened disks, so there's several in the stack of disks, are called thylakoids. So there's the spelling of it. I'll make it bigger for you. Thylakoids. A lot of you may remember this as one of the bonus questions. Uh, thylakoid. So each little green disc is a thylakoid, and this is the specific place in a plant cell inside the chloroplast that photosynthesis takes place. So I really want you to know what a thylakoid is. It's essentially a little hollowed out membranous sac, right? So I draw them as these little sort of stacks, basically. This uh, outer part is the membrane. And inside is the uh, inner space. Right? It's a little hollowed out space. So keep that in mind, okay? As we as we move through the screencast, again, if you if you're taking notes and you want to write that down, go ahead and pause it and do that. These will be the same notes that we we take in class and discuss in class, okay? But if you want to, you know, make sure you get it in two places, go ahead and pause it and do that. Otherwise, we're going to move on. Now, for the overall reaction of photosynthesis, remember this is, a, this is a chemical reaction, we're going to go from reactants to products. Uh, this slide essentially summarizes it. And, and what I want to guide you to when you're thinking about the overall chemical reaction for photosynthesis, I really want you to think about what happens when you are taking care of a plant. So uh, if you have a plant at home or you're, you've, you've been asked to take care of family members or, or neighbor's plant, what do you do to ensure that this plant survives when they come back, right? Um, Probably the most obvious thing is you have to water the plant, right? So they always ask you to water the plant. We will figure out in this unit why you have to water a plant, so bear with me, but it is definitely one of the reactants that must go into this chemical reaction. Carbon dioxide is also a requirement, so as long as you're not putting your, your plant in an airtight box, it's going to have access to carbon dioxide, and, and plus, um, and this is kind of that superstition that it's uh, it's beneficial to talk to your, your plants. They do well when you talk to them, but, the reason people say that, I guess, is because um, 
carbon dioxide is expelled from our breath, right? It's a waste product for us. So when we talk to our plants, we're essentially giving it carbon dioxide. Whatever. I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not, but those are the basic re the reactants, okay? So what are the products? What, are, what is photosynthesis going to create? Well, it's going to create sugars. Uh, these sugars are, are, are used as energy for the plant. Remember, they need energy because they... Uh, they can't go out and get food, so they make their, they make they make their own food to make energy, right? So, glucose will be used to make energy, and then it can be used to make the cell wall, uh, or it can be stored as starch. So those are the uses for some of uh, for for this product. Some of the uses for this product. Oxygen is also a product. It's a byproduct. It's not useful in any way to the plant. So the oxygen is uh, it leaves the plant. And it goes out into the atmosphere, and that's actually what we breathe in, right? So there's that that relationship between us breathing out carbon dioxide and it being useful for the plant as a reactant, and the plant giving off oxygen and it being useful for us for for our our life, right? So there's that relationship, that duality that we talked about in class, and I just wanted to reemphasize that with you here. <clears throat> All right, so this this slide looks really busy, and there's a lot of information here. Uh, but you need to be able to understand this slide. In fact, it, it, in a lot of ways, it's going to be the basis for your test. right? So you need to know this slide. So when we get to certain parts, pause it and write down your, your answers to some of these questions, right? because these are going to be significant uh, for, for the test. One of the ways to look at this slide is to kind of break it down into two processes, two parts. Over here you have the light reactions, and over here you have the Calvin cycle. So two parts of photosynthesis. Let's call this number one, call this number two. It's a good way to think about it. Now in the light reactions, the first part of photosynthesis, this is the part that requires light. That's why it's called light reactions. Uh, this occurs in this structure. What is that structure? Okay. So ask yourself what we're looking at right now. So. Uh, pause it if you if you if you need some more time, and write down the question: Where do the light reactions occur? Okay, Just take some time and write that down. If not, we'll continue. We'll be here if you if you pause it and come back. Okay, so the light reactions occur in the thylakoid. So these are the thylakoids. Those are those membranous um, sacs that are inside the chloroplast. Remember, all this is occurring in the chloroplast. These are both areas in the chloroplast. We just talked about before, water comes in, it's used for this reaction, and oxygen comes out. But that's not the only thing that comes out of the light reactions. This is just one thing. And it's not the most useful thing. It's a, it's a byproduct, essentially. It's a waste. So we're not too, too concerned with oxygen. I mean, it's, it, it's actually essential because we, we, we use that to, uh, to breathe in for cellular respiration. So it's important, but it's not what the photosynthesis is trying to create for the plant. So from the plant's perspective, it's not the most energetic. What is the most energetic is ATP and this molecule called NADPH. Okay, so in a, fu in a future screencast, I will explain in more detail, and we'll do this in class also, exactly what ATP and NADPH are. Uh, they're produced by the light reactions. I'm going to put that they're high energy. Okay, so they're very important for the process uh, of photosynthesis. Now, if you follow the arrows, these arrows are saying that these things are produced by the light reactions, and they're used or required for the Calvin cycle, right? So that's what those arrows are saying. Now, that the products that we made in photosynthesis, NADPH and ATP, are going to go into the Calvin cycle, okay? Um, Calvin cycle requires carbon dioxide, so that's that other reactant for photosynthesis. And something's going to happen here. I'm not going to go into too many details of this right now. That's another future screencast. Something happens and it produces sugar. Once again, the sugars are going to be used as energy for the cell. You know, I should say that it's, it's food for plant cells. We haven't learned about cellular respiration, but um, this food... will be made into energy. Okay, so I'll make that distinction. We haven't covered cellular respiration yet, but we will get there. 
All right, so again, pause it if you don't know these answers. What does each part occur? Okay, so part one right here, the light reactions, occurs in the thylakoids. Part two, the Calvin cycle, appears out here. Now, you might ask yourself, where is out here? It's, it's not in the thylakoids. There's this other space called the stroma. The stroma is a lot like cytoplasm for a cell, but remember, we're inside the chloroplast here. So this is occurring inside the, 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 the chloroplast here. Okay, so stroma, it's the stuff that surrounds the thylakoids. And again, we will emphasize this again in a future screencast and in class. What does each part require? Well, certainly the light reactions requires water. Uh, the, carbon, uh, the, the Calvin cycle requires carbon dioxide. But remember too, the Calvin cycle also requires ATP here and NADPH. There's a lot of stuff to this. We will, we will certainly iron this out again. This slide is getting a little busy. Um, what does each part produce? Okay, so again, pause it if you need some more time, but the rest of us will move on. The Calvin cycle produces sugar. The light reaction produces oxygen. But again, you need to kind of take into consideration these middle parts. Okay, because the Calvin cycle is producing NADP plus and NADP, whereas light reactions is producing NADPH and ATP. This will make a little more sense in the future. I just wanted to introduce this to you. Okay. Big picture now. So you should stop and write a little paragraph that covers the big picture um, of photosynthesis. So I want you to, to, to write down what's the relationship between the light reactions and the Calvin cycle. Do yourself a favor. Don't just listen to me and don't, don't just write down exactly what I'm saying. Stop and think about the importance of the relationship between these two. How are they connected? What's the relationship? Well, um, after you've, writ you've written this answer down, uh, uh, come back to the screencast. So push pause, write an answer down, and come back and press play, okay? Uh, this will be the answer that you, come, that, you, that you arrive at, hopefully. Okay, so reactants. Okay. Go on to products. So for each half, say if this is the if this is the light reactions, light reactions going to require a certain pro, uh, reactant to make a certain product. That product then will become a reactant for the Calvin cycle, which produces. Um, the reactants for the, the light reaction. So there's this relationship here. Okay, so if you go back to the slide, essentially what's happening here is that the light reactions are making ATP and NADPH. So that's their product. But for the Calvin cycle, that's a reactant. That's what they need to start the material. For the Calvin cycle, it's going to produce something different. It's going to produce NADP plus and ADP. So that's its product, but from the perspective of the light reactions, um, that's the reactant. That's what's going to feed into that process. Okay, so there's that relationship that each produces materials for the next process, uh, and it's cyclical, right? So it just kind of repeats itself. If you don't got it, don't worry. You can always go back to the screencast. We will go over this in class a lot. It's a complicated process, but it shouldn't be overwhelming. And uh, you know, with a little hard work, we can you can totally understand this process. It's not. Um, it shouldn't be too difficult in the end. Okay, so hang in there, stick with me. This was just an introduction. We're going to cover these details um, much more in class. Okay, see you next time.